Hey guys, I've titled this lesson that we're having today, The Administration of Death Laboring to Mortify the Constitution of Man. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit, into the wilderness, and and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the, of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So guys, we have been discussing Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15. And which is an amazing passage of scripture that gives us uh, uh, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? We see here in verse 12, Lucifer's vertical detachment from the glory of God and his spiritual proximity to flesh, bringing cognizance of sin and death to mortal man. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12, where Satan is cast out of heaven. 1 John 3, 4, Revel excuse me, Romans chapter 3, verse 20 and 23, and Romans chapter 6, verse 23, we see the knowledge of sin bringing death to all flesh by the manifest presence of Satan in our world. And Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12, we have the casting out of Satan from the courts of heaven and his, uh, his actually his being resigned resignation to uh, uh, the earth. He's no longer allowed to, to, uh, to egress uh, apart from planet earth and uh, the war between good and evil plays out here in the spiritual realm and in the natural realm uh, uh, amongst uh, the children of God and the children of man. So verse 13 and 14, we see, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. We see Lucifer's motives for his attempted coup in the courts of heaven as he labored to supplant the glory of Holy Father God. And finally in verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. We see Lucifer's transformation into Satan as his new habitation is declared to Peter 2, 4, for if God spared not the angels at sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, where we see uh, Satan's occupation uh, and, and the habitation of, of hell and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So here we have we have his very Satan's the declaration of Satan's habitation in hell as the angel of the bottomless pit, the one that has as the resident of death that has the power of death over mortal man. Hebrews chapter two verse 14 and 15. So guys, this is an amazing passage of scripture. Hebrews, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15. It's got a lot of it, uh, really important information that everybody needs to be clear on about Satan's, uh, Satan's rebellion in heaven, 
his his very presence uh, causing the death of all flesh, bringing cognizance of sin and transgression against Holy Father God to to mortal man, his motives for for his rebellion in the courts of heaven, and finally his transformation in verse fifteen of of from Lucifer into Satan. He's no longer Lucifer. He's no longer the light bearer anymore. He's now Satan, the deceiver. Okay, so that everybody needs to be absolutely crystal clear on that. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, and verse 12 declares his habitation in conjunction with John chapter 8, verse 44, as the habitation of deceit. So we understand the dragon gives his power unto the beast. We understand Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, that the dragon is specifically named as Satan. And so we also understand that the dragon gives his power unto the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And the beast summoned his image to captivate all flesh with the spirit of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. If any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. 1 John 2, 15 through 18, where we have the fundamental deepest and the deepest roots of the spirit of Antichrist, the lust of flesh and lust of eyes and the pride of life, as the, is, as the spirit of Antichrist labors to captivate men in satanic power. 1 Timothy 6, 10. And we understand the beast to be Antichrist, as it is specifically named so in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is, a, it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. In Job chapter 41, verse 34, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. And we thus understand Babylonian captivity to be the kingdom of Antichrist, where all souls are in subject subjection unto the will of the king. We see this in Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill the beast's will and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. So we see Babylonian captivity as the kingdom of Antichrist and the kingdom of that is depicted in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, as we understand it to be the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, arrayed in a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist in our world, as they have been evaluated by Holy Father God prior to to the second advent of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him, in him was life, and that life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. English Standard Version, and the darkness has never overpowered it. So we know only light can evaluate what is in the darkness. Darkness has no power whatsoever to evaluate what is in the light. So guys, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6 and 7. I'm going to go ahead and read that for you really fast. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Here we see this is a direct reference to captivity in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. Be not cut off in her iniquity. This is a direct reference to false apostate Christianity and her union and the, and the union of civil and ecclesiastical power, as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6 and 7. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. So in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6 and 7, we see the kingdom of Babylon depicted as the golden cup in the harlot's hand and vertical detachment from the glory of God as all flesh residing spiritually in the kingdom of the beast have his mark and are manifestly de declared to be cut off in her iniquity. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8 And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, 
that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. We see the fall of Babylon of the Babylonian kingdom as all flesh is declared captive to Satan with the mark of the beast. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 9, Romans chapter 7 verse 12 through 14, John chapter 14 verse 21, and Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. So we see, we see here in, Reve in Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, and Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2, also we see the same vertical detachment that Lucifer was subjected to, and as his power, his kingdom comes to fruition, as, as depicted as the kingdom of Babylon in the hearts of men, and this kingdom, flesh, being cut off vertically from the glory and grace of Holy Father God, by the manifest judgments of God, and they are manifestly declared to be in Revelation 14, 8 and Revelation chapter 18, 1 and 2, vertically detached, just as Lucifer transformed into Satan. This is the same transformation that all flesh will experience if they are resident in Babylonian captivity. And Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2 is the angel comes down in the glory of God. It's witnessing the captivity of all flesh in Babylon. And it's actually one angel. One angel is witnessing, evaluating the darkness. And he sees where every single demon is arrayed upon the flesh of all those that are in Babylonian captivity with the mark of the beast as they are now resident in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. So it's an amazing passage of Scripture. So um, it is the work of Satan to continually disseminate misinformation and lies. John chapter 8, verse 44. You are your father the devil, and the less of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own because he is a liar and the father of it. And it is the lifetime effort of man to reflect the image of his creator. 2, 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 and 6 and 7. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure and earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So here we have, we have the manifest declaration of Holy Father God by the glory of God dispelling the darkness that's resident within our hearts by the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God for all flesh in our world. And so let me state this again. It is the work of Satan to continually disseminate misinformation and lies. John chapter 8 verse 44. This is not just telling one lie and then going, this is the, it's an administration. It's an administration and it's a ministry. It's a ministry of lies and it's, it's specifically satanically designed by the beast and his image to captivate people without the presence of God. And, and, a, and the permanent habitation of a lie Exchanging the lie, exchanging the truth for a lie, believing the, the lie to be truth and manifestly declared as the habitation of death through the seal of Satan takes permanent residence within people's souls. The labors of man to conceal illicit works in satanic occupation is the manifest ministry and high priesthood of Satan's children. As man labors to conceal illicit works with a fraudulent cloak of righteousness, as man stepping into his satanic priesthood, 
the full manifestation of satanic occupation and captivity of the souls of of man. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 through 15. Let me read that again. The labors of man to conceal illicit works and satanic occupation is the manifest ministry and high priesthood of Satan's children as man labors to conceal illicit works with a fraudulent cloak of righteousness as man stepping into his satanic priesthood, the final manifestation of satanic occupation and captivity of the souls of all men. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. We have the manifest declaration of the administration of the image to the beast as it is, it is resonant with the seal of Satan. The residence of death is in predestination and permanency within its soul, and it is manifestly laboring in that fashion to make it, to cultivate this harvest of death within our world. So this this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 through 15 explicates that there is a ministry, there's an administration and there's a mediator between all flesh and the beast. There's a mediator between all flesh and the spirit of antichrist and that is the image to the beast that's there to enforce the seal of Satan with in the abode of lies upon all flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We have Satan here manifestly declared to be an angel's a messenger, and the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, a messenger of the gospel, and his ministers put on that same fraudulent cloak of righteousness and as high priests of Satan and labor to captivate the world in the abode of deceit and a lie. And permanent re the permanent resonance of death and occupation within the soul of man. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 declares Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. And that's what Jesus, the manifest declaration of the purpose of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary is to bring forth the administration and the ministry of the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, magnifying the glory of God in the hearts of men in our world. And with the image of the beast, it's the exact, with Antichrist, Antichrist power, it's the exact opposite. It's to captivate people in deceit, to bring them permanently in the abode of a lie, and to captivate their souls with the seal of Satan unto death and force them to take the, their final seats in the kingdom of hell as children of Satan at the, at, at the end of our world, which is manifestly declared to be upon us. So, this is very important, guys. Public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice are the fulfillment of the ministry of the image of the beast in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as explicated in the seal of Satan in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Let me state that again. Public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice are the fulfillment of the ministry of the image to the beast in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as explicated in the seal of Satan in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that admit, as many would not worship, the image to the beast should be killed. And he, the image to the beast, causeth all flesh both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And we know the administration of the image of the beast is what causes 
immediately when the seal of Satan is manifested in the fullness of its numbers and, the op and, and its operational capacity in the constitution of man, this immediately causes the mark of the beast to rapidly fall on all flesh held captive to Satan as vertical detachment from the glory of Holy Father God. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. This is what this is declaring. In this amazing passage of Scripture that we've been discussing for several weeks, Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us, we wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22 and 3 through 6. And Isaiah 59, verse 9 and 10 appears to me, guys, to be all the people that are held captive to the administration of the image to the beast as they are, they are witnessing the ministry, the and the the mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist, the image of the beast, its captivity, the seal of Satan, they're witnessing the seal of Satan in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as they are overrun with satanic power and they are manifestly declared to be captive to the image of the beast in his environment. And they're declaring, they're declaring their, their desolation and their captivity to Satan. And by what they're witnessing as, as the image of the beast is manifestly performing its ministry in the sight of its father, Satan. And that that's public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice. And they're witnessing it. And it's caused them, it has caused, because they're witnessing it, it caused the mark of the beast to fall upon them. And they are now full, their blood is contaminated with the spirit of Antichrist. The demons of hell are arrayed in their presence. And they are captive to the habitation of Satan in their souls. And this is fulfilled. This, we see the fulfillment of this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. This is how, this is how terrible this is going to be in every single home of the United States of America for every single person that's captivated by the ministry of the image of the beast and overrun in satanic power that can no longer receive vertically from the from Holy Father God and His glory. So it's terrible. By these facts, we know the image to the beast's ministry, pouring out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, and soliciting the worship of death, Romans 3, 13, is the very same labors of Satan to usurp the glory of Holy Father God in the courts of heaven as the image of the beast labors to incorporate the seal of Satan in the constitution of man. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26, we've been discussing that this passage points directly, the end of this passage, where all men are taken captive to the will of the beast, points directly to Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, as that word captive there depicts dead souls residing in suspended animation and held captive to the appearing of their king and antichrist, which is the, the power of the dragon. And so it's horrible. And so... This is also this, the ministry of the image of the beast incorporating the seal of Satan and the constitution of man is laboring to reflect this captivity and illicit union of civil and ecclesiastical powers declared in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, where we have the union of the beast and the harlot. And thus, not only declaring its vertical detachment from the glory of Holy Father God, but all flesh held captive to its illicit desires within its immediate environment. The image of the beast is declaring. The image of the beast is absolutely declaring by its captivity of civil and ecclesiastical powers with the seal of Satan and manifestly 
incorporating the seal of Satan within the constitution of man, it is actually declaring its vertical detachment from the glory of Holy Father God by all flesh and uh, the captivity of all flesh held captive to its illicit desires within its immediate environment. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 through 22. We see, I personally believe this is, this is a reference to the ministry. The first Isaiah 8, 20 is a reference to the ministry of the image of the beast, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in him. And then we have the manifest declaration of the fulfillment of the image of the beast coming on all, all those that are held captive to, Satan, to Satan's power within the image of the beast's environment. And they shall pass through it. This appears to me to be the passing through of the cut off, the cutting off of vertical, the vertical detachment of the glory of God from those that cannot maintain the glory of God within the, the manifestation of the the ministry, the administration of the image of the beast. God's declaring their their vertical detachment here. And they shall pass through it, already bestead and hungry. hungry. Remember Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. Here's here's what they're doing. This is This is the kingdom. This is what the kingdom is about of satanic occupation. It's about cursing anything that is called God or that is worshipped, and that's the full manifestation of the residence of their king within their blood and the demons of hell within their environment as they now understand the rebellion of Satan transforming into Lucifer within their own souls. And they shall look under the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. The glory of God has departed permanently and they now have taken their final seats. They have the seal of Satan, and they've taken the final seats, which is, excuse me, they have the seal of Satan, as manifested by Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, and they've taken their final seats in the kingdom of hell, as manifested by Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. Thus it appears, these very labors of the image to the beast to incorporate the seal of Satan in the constitution of man are one and the same as Lucifer's transformation into Satan, perpetrated by local city, state, by local city, state law enforcement unions to vertically detach every single citizen of the United States of America from federal constitutional incorporation in federal oversight, welfare, and constitutional protections. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. We see the manifestation of this detachment from God's, God's incorporation of constitutionalism, uh, cultivating the fruits of righteousness within man and allowing all flesh to choose to serve him freely or no. Only in the presence of God are men allowed to choose to serve him or no without penalty. But that we know that's not so by manifest in the manifest kingdom of Satan as declared within the seal of Satan in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Thus it is declared, Revelation twenty two seventeen. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of the life freely. Revelation three twenty. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. So we know only in the presence of Holy Father God can man choose to serve God or no, in constitutional protections without penalty to his flesh in this life. When the seal of Satan comes upon the populations of this world, Satan will force every single person he can in their flesh on pain of death to receive his mark and to be manifestly declared to be his child. That's satanic power, and that's the nature of the abode of of Satan's presence in our world today. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 puts it this way. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and that opened not the house of his prisoners? 
Once he puts the seal of Satan within your heart, you're done. He's not going to let you go. And God's not going to, God doesn't force anybody into the kingdom of, of heaven. Therefore, God's going to leave you in darkness right where, right where you chose to abide in satanic occupation as you were solicited intimately with the worship of death by the manifest ministry of the image to the beast in our world today. So let me read this again. Thus it appears these very labors of the image of the beast to incorporate the seal of Satan in, in the constitution of man are one and the same as Lucifer's transformation into Satan perpetrated by local city, state, local city, state, local city and state law enforcement unions to vertically detach every single citizen of the United States of America from federal constitutional incorporation and federal oversight welfare, and constitutional protections. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. So guys, the image of the beast we know is cultivating the harvest of death and the souls of all flesh. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. Romans 7, 5. For when we are in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work on our members to bring forth fruit unto death. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, where we see the torments coming, the, the harvest coming in its its sipients and its beginning stages as it begins to come to fruition with all those the image of the beast is torturing that will not manifestly labor to be under the auspices, auspices of Holy Father God. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, true spakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. What, what is Paul is explicating here in 2 Timothy is people that are receiving vertically of the glory of God through the fruits of life. In Galatians 5, and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meanness, temperance, against such there is no law, and not laboring to cultivate the fruits of righteousness, and thus the ministry of Satan is declared in the previous verses of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. And this is, the, we know, the image of the beast is, this is when the image of the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist and solicits the worship of death, in a passive manifestation in the population, tormenting, tormenting people in their flesh, it's laboring to cultivate this harvest of death in the souls of man to captivate people when the harvest comes to the full and it's time to put in the sickle. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. So the image of the beast is cultivating the harvest of death in the souls of all flesh. Proverbs 18, 21, Romans 7, 5, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. If the words, the administration of the image to the beast, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, were not carrying spiritual power behind it, God would be a liar, and the administration of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary would be null and void. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. To enjoy, we know. So the image of the beast is cultivating the harvest of death in the souls of all flesh to enjoy a temporal, illicit harvest of iniquity, transgression, and sin as manifestly declared in the sight of its father, Satan. To... Satan, that it's laboring to make manifest through civil and ecclesiastical constitutional incorporation of satanic power in the temple of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of lawlessness, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Here we have the appearing in corporeal form of the beast 
as the image of the beast is captivating all flesh on pain of death in the kingdom of hell to the will of the Babylonian king. Manifestly declaring all flesh to be the children of Satan with the mark of the beast taking their final seats in the kingdom of hell by the, by the ministry and the administration of death forcing them and causing them to receive the mark of the beast as the image of the beast, the image of the beast administration and the seal of Satan came to its full, fullness of its numbers and operational capacity and caused the mark of the beast to fall upon all those that cannot resist satanic power by the glory of Holy Father God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10 through 15. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Excuse me. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne move of God today directly and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.